Young, I think we'd be hard pressed to find another program in the country that uses as many freshmen in key roles as you'll see in the. Uh, there it is in the graphic. And the. All right, that'll do it from the Penn State point of view. Let's go back over to Mike. Okay, guys, let's lift the curtain and play some Big Ten college basketball. It's the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions of Penn State. The starting lineups coming up after this. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same revolutionary new training techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. The Defensive Drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Braves superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-274-4199. That's 1-800-274-4199. It really worked for me. So you think you can hit a jumper in traffic? Bury a three. Or make a slam dunk with authority. Well, even if you can't, watch the guys who can right here on Sports Channel. This season, Sports Channel's lineup includes the best regional action from the Atlantic 10, the Big East, and the Big 10. So don't worry about hitting the open, Jay. Hit your remote. Watch Sports Channel. And let someone else hit the shot. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe, all day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams, plus sports you want to see, 24 hours a day. It's all the teams, all the time, always on Sports Channel. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Golden State Warriors tonight at 10.30, exclusively on Sports Channel. Back in St. John Arena, Mike Gleason, Bill Hoska, Creative Sports. It's the Nittany Lions at unbeat net 9-0 and the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Lifting the curtain on this Big Ten season. Let's start with the starting lineups for Jerry Dunn's Nittany Lions. Coming in at 9-0, and the best start in 71 years. Dan Earl leading the Big Ten with 5.9 assists a game. And, of course, Bill talked about Pete Lasicki, over 60% of his threes. Calvin Booth from Reynoldsburg uh, holding down the middle. And for the Buckeyes, it's Stringer and Coleman. Nashawn Coleman getting a start for the Buckeyes. Steve Belter instead of Jermaine Tate in the middle, along with Rick Ute and Sean Stonerook. It's the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions. We'll be back with the opening tip from St. John Arena coming up right after this. We need your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. To help keep Jimmy V's dream alive, please call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Golden State Warriors tonight at 10.30, exclusively on Sports Channel. 
Back in St. John Arena, getting ready for the Big Ten opener. Mike Leach and Bill Hoskett were almost ready to go. Penn State comes in leading the NCAA in three-point shooting percentage, a scoring margin of plus 24, and rebounding at plus 16. And Bill, you talked about Lasicki hitting over 60 percent, but uh, they're not only an outside game; they're an inside and outside game. Well, they've played very well at both ends, and here's a key matchup we'll be looking from the point guard situation here tonight. You have the quickness of Damon Stringer, but going against the experience of a Dan Earl. Earl, much better outside shooter. But Stringer, much, much quicker. And, of course, Calvin Booth out of Reynoldsburg. Groveport to Madison High School. The series 7-4 lead Buckeyes last season went to Penn State. Bruce Parkhill's final year as the head coach of the Nittany Lions. Penn State controls the opening tip. And this Big Ten college basketball season is underway. Earl goes inside. Gaudio stripped away, but it's Booth with the shot. Rebound comes out to Ohio State. Damon Stringer knocked out of bounds. It stays with Penn State. Tough break, Bill, for Ohio State in the early going there. Well, Booth misses the easy one, and then Gaudio gets a hand on the ball, and that's what they really like about this young man, just that great blue-collar ethic. He's a hard-working kid, sat out last year with injuries, was a student assistant coach, and then comes back again this year to play. Len Secunda, the transfer from Syracuse last year, he steps outside, just inside the line. That's a two, and it's 2 nothing Penn State. Coleman getting the start. He and Stringer in the backcourt together. Stonebrook, Belter, and Ute on the front line for Ohio State. Ohio State would like to get this game going up-tempo. Penn State prefers to play it half-court. Well, Bill, coming back from Wyoming, uh, a couple of bumps and bruises with Jermaine Tate and Jamie Bosley. Uh, you wonder how much is Randy Ayers just shaking up the lineup here to open up some eyes, though. Nice feed inside. Oh. Stonebrook there for the jam. Well, we've talked about that young man has to become more assertive. He certainly was on that move from the left baseline. And Calvin Booth loses it, goes out of bounds. That's the uh, first turnover for the Lions. They come in averaging about 16 a ball game, and the Buckeyes have a chance to grab the lead. Ohio State came with zone pressure, and they let their big people bring it down the floor. Coleman Booth just taking his eyes off the pass, and out of bounds it goes. Coleman and Stringer are both playing well in that Wyoming game. A Stringer back-to-back 19-point -back performances in the Cowboys shootout. Coleman with 14 points off the bench in that finals against the Cowboys in that loss. Buckeyes 7 and 2, Nick Lions at 9 and 0. Ute. The scoring leader all season long, but after the Cowboys shootout, Damon Stringer has moved in front now as far as being the leading scorer for these Buckeyes. Ute, three point land, he's got it. Rick Ute. So the Buckeyes move out in front by three now. Early going, 18 08 to go in the first half. Man-to-man -man pressure out of Ohio State. After the made field goal, they picked up full court. Nice soft touch by Earl. Stringer went for the reach out at half court. When he missed it, Earl took care of the basketball and then took care of the basket. Well, that Earl, he is a headsy player. Huh? Not only can he dish, but he can shoot to Jay as well. A little traveling music for the Buckeyes as Rick Ute. Move that pivot foot as he headed for the baseline, and uh, the Nittany Lions trailing by one with the basketball. Well, Bruce Parkhill electing to retire last summer, surprising a lot of people. Of course, he's here tonight, handling color commentary for the Penn State Nittany Lions, still involved with their athletic department. First year coach, Mr. Dunn, he just goes out and wins his first nine. <laughs> Kidding Bruce before the game, said they're finally getting some coaching at Penn State. <laughs> they were seven and zero last year. 9-0 this year. Secunda inside Booth. Nice soft left-handed touch by the big guy. That's his first bucket. And what a pleasant surprise he has been for Penn State. Right here at Groveport Madison. Sat out last year as a red shirt. Belter strong move inside. Good play by Belter. He got the big kid moving and then with the ball fake got him up in the air messed up his timing and Belter will go to the free throw line. You know, Calvin Booth uh, red shirting last year behind John Amici. He's already put on 15 pounds. He's gone from 190 to 205. Imagine that guy if he put on another 15 go. Well, he's leading the Big Ten and block shots. Steve Belter that time very much aware of that made that good ball fake and Belter gets the first of two free throws. Boy, and you can't say enough. Talk about pleasant surprises. Here's one for Ohio State. This kid has really played well. Coming off the bench until tonight. Gets the starting nod. 
pressure pays off for Ohio State. And another turnover for Penn State. The Buckeyes with that one-point lead. Jerry Dunn in his first year, 12 years, assisting Bruce Parkhill in Happy Valley. So now the Buckeyes uh, will get the basketball. That's not the attitude of an assistant coach you saw right there. You change quickly when you become the head man. Penn State with two early turnovers. And the Buckeyes come in and averaging about 18 turnovers a game. Nice State pass. Belcher inside. Strong move, Phil. Zone trap. And here's where Earl has the ball in the middle of the floor. Stringer picks him up very quickly. Point we wanted to watch tonight is how well Ohio State matches up after they break pressure. The big left-hander gets two more. 6-11. 2-0-5. Stringer penetration. Kicks outside. Ute. Almost the same play. They threw it away against the Cowboys. Stringer outside. He misses the shot this time. The hustle that time by Stonewood for the Lions come away with it. Earl. Secunda. Penetration. And it goes out of bounds. Stays with the Nittany Lions. And getting back to Steve Belter, though, it looks like uh, he's comfortable in the starting role, at least in the early going, Bill. Well, he's played very well. Made a nice cut inside early and made a great cut without the ball moments ago to taking that pass from Rick Hughes. For a strong hoop inside. Gaudio inside the booth. Boy, Gaudio really brings a presence too. He steps outside, hits the jumper, and that's the three. They give him a three. Inside, outside, took it in the booth. When the heads turned, Gaudio just respotted on the three point line, knocked it in. He's missed two of the last three seasons, Gaudio has. Uh, he was in a student assistant coach last year, the year before that, a medical redshirt year because of back problems. He's 6'8, 240 pounds. His presence was really welcomed by Jerry Dunn. Coleman, left side, misses the shot. Rebound comes out to Stonerook. Great hands by Stonerook. He was blocked out, but got a hand on the ball. Now they lose it. Some good hands there by Secunda. And Coleman's called for reaching in. Well, this starting five, as you see Randy Ayers talking over that call, very solid for Penn State on the perimeter. And the big question was, with Amici graduating, what would happen in the middle? And Calvin Booth has filled in very, very well. 15.41 to go. The Big Ten opener here. The Nittany Lions by two over the Buckeyes. It's 11-9. Back with more after this. The revolution will be led by Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd. But he will not face the nation, meet the press, or host the revolution online cyber chat. Because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. And the revolution will not fail. You know us, we're Core State's bank. But you may not know about our new Core State's check card. See, looks like a credit card, but it's not, because it works like a check, only easier. The amount you spend wherever you see a Visa sign is automatically deducted from your checking account. So there's no bill at the end of the month, ever. Is that easy or what? Sign up for your Core State's check card today. Oh, I forgot, the card that works like a check, only easier. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Vancouver Grizzlies Friday night at 10 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. Back in St. John Arena, Penn State leading the Buckeyes by 2, 11 to 9. And tonight's Big Ten Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of any or all of this game without the express or prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Penn State and Ohio State both shooting over 50% from the floor for the season. Good numbers here tonight, especially for the Nittany Lions. Five out of six in the early going. This club shoots 50% from the floor and 49% from the three-point area. Osicki, in and out. Misses his first three, and Williams gets it swatted away, but Booth is there. He's shooting down at the bucket. Calvin Booth, the, the freshman out of Reynoldsburg, with six points. Nice, nice pass. Coleman kicks it back out. Stonebrook 
He's going to be called with no. Gaudio is going to be charged with the foul. I thought they'd have some traveling music on Stoney. But Gaudio picks up his first. Stone Rook passes up the jumper, gets the return pass back. There was the feed inside. Coleman finds his teammate again. Good fake. Takes it to the hoop. So the Buckeyes still with Coleman and Stringer in the backcourt. Uh, Singleton is checked in now. That's Singleton with the basketball. Picked up by Donovan Williams. Belter, strong move to the glass. Missed the shot. Boy, Belter's really taking it to the uh, hole with some authority early on, Bill. Well, for all practical purposes, his first year, in, obviously, a play in the Big Ten, and the same way with Booth. And these two kids have five field goals between them in the early going. Coleman. Gaudio with the rebound for Penn State. 13-9 Lions by four. Penn State will show a lot of patience in their half-court offense. Earl penetration, nice feed inside. And Gaudio looked like he had the shot attempt the first time. Double clutched it. Had to force it. Coleman steps outside for three. His first bucket. And that's one thing that Sean Coleman will bring to this lineup is a little better outside shooting stroke from outside. Bosley a little better penetrator. Coleman, excellent shooter when he gets the feet set. Earl, baseline, boof, soft jumper, misses it from the baseline. Here we go, Buckeyes in transition. Two on one. Coleman off the window, he has five. And they just outran Penn State for 75 feet. Coming out with a long rebound. Nice break. Five lead changes in the game now. 13.50 to go. Buckeyes holding on to the one-point lead. Ohio State straight man-to-man, -man, and you're not going to be able to help a whole lot off certain people. But Stringer does it this time, and the Buckeyes come up with the ball again. Boy, talk about 110% effort. Belter. Stone Rook has the open three, and he rims it. I said that you cannot help a lot. When Lasicki and Earl are on the floor, their men have to find them, locate them, and stay with them. That sometimes can open up some opportunities for other teammates. Good ball fake. 16-footer for Earl. And that's twice he's gotten Damon Stringer to come out to basketball and just beat him with fundamentals, and both times knocked in those jumpers. Well, Randy Ayers wants a 20-second timeout to talk things over. They trail. Six lead changes in the game now, 15 to 14 in the Nittany Lions. You know, you Bill, you talk about uh, Penn State on the other side with Jerry Dunn. The, the entire complexion of last year's team, and they had a 21 season last year. He got Secunda. He goes uh, power forward last year, and you know, as well as anybody, he enjoys the small forward right. spot a lot better. Well, now he can move out to small forward, and not only get Gaudio back from back surgery, but Phil Williams can spell Gaudio at the power forward. I mean, they've got some size on the inside, and they, uh, as you mentioned, they definitely can shoot on the perimeter. And of course, Carlton out with the medical red shirt, as you see. Don Jantonio now checking in for Ohio State and Jamie Bosley. So a fresh backcourt for the Buckeyes. Singleton inbounds for Ohio State. Jantonio, six lead changes in the game. Nittany Lions ranked number 25 in the USA Today CNN coaches poll. The first time in 30 years they've cracked the poll. And it appears there, yes, they're showing a little 2-3 zone now. Coming out of the 22nd timeout, they changed the defense. Tate. Singleton throws it out of bounds. D'Antonio can't find the touch. Goes out of bounds in Penn State now. Trailing by one. Penn State leading by one with a basketball. Glenn Secunda averaging about 12-6. Just under 13 points a game. He has one bucket tonight. Lasicki out. You got Donovan Williams and Earl. Once again, they flop the court. Bring it up with the forwards. It gets man-to-man -man pressure. Earl, this time from 14 feet. Same thing that he did to Stringer moments ago. Another good ball fake and gets Gantonio out of position this time. And the Bucks turn it over again. And this time the Lions are running. Earl's going to take it the distance, the whistle, the foul. And Earl will go to the line. Foul's on number 35 for Ohio State. 
He had the opening, took it inside, good control of the ball, no question about the contact. Earl will go to the line to shoot a pair. And Big Phil Williams checks in for Gaudio for Penn State. And we say big because he's 265. Shooting two. Short this time on the free throw. Here was the move moments ago. Ball fake. Defenders out of position. Nothing but the bottom. Got to like his boys. 181 assists last year. Misses both free throws. It's a rarity. He shoots about 76% for the line. So 17-14. Buckeyes trail by three. 12 minutes to go. First half. Stone Rook in the paint. Whistle. There's the foul. Looks like it goes against Metzger. Nice cut without the basketball by Stone Rook. Saw the opening right in the heart of the defense. And moved very quickly to the open spot. And have a couple of chances. You know, Bill, you look at this Penn State basketball team. I mean, Calvin Booth leaves with six points. He's 6'11". Metzger comes in. He's a 6'10 junior. They've got some bodies. They've got a nice makeup on that basketball team. Stone Rock gets the free throw. And I think the Buckeyes will find this the rest of the season as they go into Big Ten play. Booth leading the conference. And Sean Stone Rook and... Jermaine Tate, number three and four, and block shots. Stone Rock with four free throws now, and the Buckeye cut the lead to one at 17 16 Penn State over the Buckeyes. More after this. Okay, new rules. Individuals are no longer more important than the team. You want a piece of that championship? Put it in here. Nobody can do it alone, but together we can do it. Sports magazines include more team photos. More game balls go to linemen. We all play more as a team. We pat someone on the butt when they fail and celebrate like madmen when they succeed. Starter, it's about team. 1995 marks the 100th season of Big Ten Conference football action. Celebrate the centennial anniversary of the Big Ten by ordering this commemorative home video chronicling 100 years of football and men's basketball. For just $19.99, you can relive the rich tradition and proud legacy of gridiron legends from Grange to Griffin and basketball greats such as Lucas, Magic, and the Fab Five. To order, call 1-800-BIG-TEN-4 or send $19.99 plus $5 shipping and handling to the address shown. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Golden State Warriors tonight at 10.30, exclusively on Sports Channel. 17-16, Penn State over the Buckeyes in the Big Ten opener. Exactly 12 minutes to go in the first half. And, Bill, this guy has been playing pretty well tonight. Well, he has the three field goals. Missed two free throws a couple of moments ago. Very solid basketball player. Junior point guard. Ohio State with their quickness. Five points off the break. Coming with pressure again. And they invert the court again. Big people handle it in the backcourt, and then get it to the guards. Earl is three for three from the field. High school teams went 59 and three. Whistle inside. It goes against Penn State, the big guy. Well, you got two Buckeyes on one play. I don't know if they tangled up or he knocked them down, but <laughs> not Tate and Singleton both went to the floor. Well, Randy Ayers told them when they get in the Big Ten, the people are going to be just a little bit bigger. <laughs> Bigger and stronger. He's 6'8", 265 pounds, Bill Williams. So the Buckeyes with a chance to force another lead change. Bosley. Springer coming off a good tournament out in Wyoming. He was on the all-tournament team, and Williams steals it for Penn State. Ohio State standing a little bit against the zone that time. Penn State had time to adjust to the passing lanes. Came up with a basketball. Gunda. Thought about it for a second. Down at Williams. Kicks it out to Earl. This will go for three and mark it down for three. Good action. Reverse the court. Earl came off the screen and had all kinds of time. And 
Jordan Bosley takes his first shot, misses. Pate's battling on the boards, and he's tied up. And it uh, goes out to Secunda. Now Penn State with a four-point lead with a chance to build. That ball bounced so high that Tate almost had to mistime it. The long arms allowed him to at least get a hand on it. He does it again at the other end as Tate bodied out of there but got a hand on the basketball. Rick Hute getting ready to check back in uh, for Ohio State right now, along with Damian McKnight and Calvin Booth uh, for the Nittany Lions. Agadio coming back in as well. So Jerry Dunn uh, goes to his bench, replacing three. So now it's McKnight and Williams in the backcourt as Dan Earl gets a breather for Penn State. Penn State staying in the 2-3 zone. Coleman hit an early jumper. Ute has a three in the ball game. Bosley, Stone Rook. Nice move. Nice touch. Stoney has six. Penn State lead cut to two again. And there's a trap and the offensive charge by Damian McKnight. Good defense by Ohio State. They set the press up after the made field goal. These two guys, both from Columbus High School activity, didn't play against each other, they say, in high school. Calvin Booth didn't read that one very well. Stone Rook avoided him down on the baseline. Nice move, and then the good trap. Ball back to Ohio State. Buckeyes with six turnovers in the first half, 10 overall. 9.52 to go in the first 20 minutes. Springer looking for something to happen. Penn State changing up, going back man to man. Tate, turnaround, baseline, misses the shot. And it's taken out by Secunda. Secunda's been tough on the boards tonight. One of the first times all year, Tate had a hand in his face. Springer with the steal. Williams with the foul. He is just so quick. He picked Williams, and then Williams trying to block him to get the ball back. Here's the steal. There's the reach in, and Williams picks up the personal. Well, he is quick as a cat. If Williams doesn't follow him, he goes behind the back. That would have been a crowd pleaser for uh, Damon Stringer. Mike, back to that last play inside for Ohio State. As we mentioned, Tate not having a hand in his face very often. And when Booth doesn't block shots, he can also alter a lot of shots. And that's what he did the last time down. Stonebrook, nice move. Getting more aggressive. And Bosley gets his first bucket. Little guy hangs in around the hoop. A hustle bucket for the Boz, and we're tied at 20. This youth of Ohio State, and that brings the people to their feet right away. Just a good second effort by Bosley. There's the pick and the deuce. Quick hands by the Boz. All right, Penn State with the basketball. 8.56 to go. Deadlocked at 20. Third year in the Big Ten, Bill. They've gone from 2-16 and 16 to 6-12 and 12 to 9-9 nine and nine last year. So obvious signs of steady improvement. Quick hands again by Bosley. Now the Lions are having some problems. A little forced that time by McKnight, but the rebound is offensive variety. And Boy, and that's what he brings to this club. Got here with five points. Mike, not a good shot. First bad shot I think they've taken in the game. And Gaudio knocks it back in for his ball club. Puts him back up by two. And Jerry Dunn says Gotti is not only 6'8", 240. Ute. Booth again. Boy, Penn State doing some intimidating down there. In the paint. 22-20, Penn State. Not only does Gotti bring a 6'8", 240-pound frame, but it's his leadership, character, that probably mean more to this basketball team. Foul away from the basketball. And let's see who this one goes on. It's Jermaine Tate talking things over. That's his first in the game. Stonewood getting ready to check back in for Randy Ayers. Randy Ayers 5-2 and two against Penn State. since taking over the Buckeyes seven years ago. Comes Stonewood back in now. Stonewood with six points. He had 15 points against the Eastern Kentucky. And Jermaine Tate, uh, the first game of the season. He hasn't started for Ayers Buckeyes. Back on the bench. 
7.59 to go in the first half. Uh, this has been a good one for the Big Ten opener here in St. John Arena. 22-20, Denny Lions by two. automatically deducted from your checking account. So there's no bill at the end of the month, ever. Is that easy or what? Sign up for your Core State's check card today. Oh, I forgot. The card that works like a check, only easier. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Vancouver Grizzlies Friday night at 10 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. Back in St. John Arena for the Big Ten opener. The Lions by 2, 22-20 over Ohio State. And right now it's time for the finish line of play of the half. Bill? Well, Sean Stonebrook took it inside and didn't get it to go. But Jamie Bosley will hang around inside. There's the rebound, and thank you very much, says Bos. Good hustle by the freshman. All right, and that is the finish line of play of the game so far. Wasicki, kind of quiet so far tonight. Secunda hasn't been. He's been strong on the board. Secunda might have gotten away with a little push that time inside. Got himself in great position. Lions by four again. The Bill, I mentioned the fact that this team was 9-9 nine nine last year. Talking about Penn State, uh, some of the OSU coaches feel that this basketball team could finish in the top half of the Big Ten. Well, as you mentioned, they're very solid in the backcourt. Getting very good play up front. There's a standstill three by Stringer. And Whoa. look at Bosley. Another hustle bucket by the Bos. Four points for Bosley. And the lead has cut to two again. Good Lions. thing you said play of the game so far because that one was a better one. Well, you know, we talked about that injury factor, but you have to wonder if uh, it might not have been a little wake-up call that Randy Ayers is playing with the starting lineups for the first time this year. Well, Bosley has certainly responded. Nice strong move by Gaudio. It doesn't drop, but he goes to the line. Nice speed in the paint. Good job of holding position. Steve Belder caught in behind. Gaudio upset with himself that he didn't get the three-point opportunity, but he'll have two free throws. Coleman checks in for Ohio State. Stringer goes out. As he took it to the hole, he saw how physical he can be. When he was a freshman, he shot 137 free throws. So that means he's been physical inside. He goes to the line. played through a lot of injuries and I think once you're injured and continue to play you have to make a lot of adjustments that's good so to see he certainly that. knows how to play there's no question and they thought enough of his basketball mind to put him on their staff as a student assistant while he sat out last year he's had back problems since his high school days I mean I'm sure Buckeye fans would like to see him on the bench but it's nice to see a guy like that come back and get a chance to play and you see the intelligence right there by Gaudio. Hung up on the floor, did not want to travel, didn't want to help ball, so he called a 20-second timeout, and they'll retain possession. The Buckeyes trailing by four, 26 to 22. Four points has been the largest lead by any team. The Iowa Hawkeyes and Purdue battling in the Big Ten opener. That one's in the second half, the Bullermakers. That was tied at halftime. And speaking of at the half, Miami, Florida trailing Syracuse by two in the Big East. That's a low-scoring affair for Big East basketball. All right, the SEC, Georgia over uh, Mississippi, 40-19. And Duke leading by three. This one's a four-point ball game as Steve Belter comes back in. Belter getting his first start for the Buckeyes here in 95-96. The 
Secunda inbounding it. Good hustle by Bosley again. Knocked out of bounds, but it stays with Penn State. Masicki's wondering where they got this guy. <laughs> you could read that on his face, couldn't you? This guy is being a pest. He's getting on my nerves. I'm 94 feet away, and I can't get away from this guy. And there they are again. You read my mind. Bosley <laughs> really hounding the 62% three-point shooter. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? 62% oh. through nine ball games. Masicki down inside, knocks it out of bounds again. Bosley not letting him get the position he wants. And Jerry Dunn not used to uh, watching his basketball team uh, force it inside like that. They just blew out Santa Clara in the finals of the Cable Car Classic, although they did have a tight ball game with Bradley, 75-72. Bosley coming off the bench, picking up his teammates at both ends of the floor. Randy Ayers calling the offensive set from the bench. Coleman. Shot clock. Down to five. Stone Rook loses it. Clock was on two when he lost the basketball. Not a good possession by Ohio State. Secunda. Left baseline. Misses the shot. You gets the rebound. John Coleman. All the opening. Took Whoa. advantage of the speed. And Booth with the rejection inside. One time this game, this season I should say, Booth had nine blocks. Two other games he had eight blocks. Yeah, that's his second of the ball game, but he's altered two other shots, but not much doubt about that one. <laughs> John Amici now with the Cleveland Cavaliers said that uh, when he was playing against Calvin Booth, working with him over the summer, he said Calvin Booth blocks it as well as anyone he's ever played against. I saw this young man in high school, and you cannot believe the improvement that he has made. 6'11", Calvin Booth. You know, people you should never give up on the big kids. <laughs> this young man has really developed. And at the time, of course, uh, Gerald Akers was here and Nate Wilborn was here. So, and a lot of Buckeye fans are probably wondering, well, if he played at Groveport Madison, you know, maybe he should have been a Buckeye. But uh, at the time, Randy Ayers had a couple of big guys and didn't foresee the future. Those guys would be leaving. Akers now, of course, with Kansas State. And Nate from Upper Arlington playing in South Carolina. And quite honestly, uh, Calvin Booth is even very much surprised the Penn State staff on how far he has come in a short amount of time. Really labeled pretty much a project coming out of high school, but he's got a lot of heart. Pretty decent coordination, obviously. Great timing. Earl pushes it this time. 15-footer, nothing but net. He's in double figures, the first to do so. He has 11. He missed both his free throws, but he's hit three foul line jumpers. So the largest lead in the game now at five. Jermaine Tate, six straight games. He's in double figures. That last free throw is his first point of the game. Springer looking for an opening on the baseline. Shot clock once again down to five seconds. And Utes doesn't reach the iron. Booth is there to grab it out of the air. Gadios inside, almost uncontested, and now it's a seven-point lead. Randy Ayers needs a timeout right now. His team struggling a little bit in the half court, and Penn State taking care of business at the offensive end. Gadio has nine. Randy gets his timeout. 4.33 to go in the first half. The Big Ten opener, and the Nittany Lions with the largest lead by 7.30 to 23. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Right guard, pure power, clear jail. An astoundingly clear jail. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff. Protect the one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Right guard, clear jail. Anything less would be uncivilized.
from around the region or around the world if it's sports. It must be Sports Channel. Mike Gleason, Bill Hoskett, the Big Ten opener from St. John Arena. The Nittany Lions with their largest lead, 30-23, and Dan Earl led the Lions last year in assists, three-point shooting percentage, and steals having another pretty good night, Bill. Well, he's five for five from the floor, and that was his first assist just moments ago. But Of course, if you're throwing it to Lasicki, you're going to get some assists when a guy's shooting 62% of his threes. But he's getting it to the right man. Ohio State now facing the zone. And David String with a basketball. He's third in the Big Ten at 5.4 assists. Earl, of course, as we mentioned, leads the Big Ten at 5.9. So Damon right up there. Stonebrook. Whistle. Donovan Williams. Not a smart foul right there as Stonebrook was standing in the corner looking for someone to pass it to. And Seventh foul, and Ohio State will shoot to 101. Jerry Dunn, his first year. He's yet to lose a basketball game. Stonerick with six, four have come from the line. Averaging. Kind of line drive that one a little bit. The leg's not too much into the shot. Gets it to go. 15 against Eastern Kentucky. For the first five games, he had 11 boards. Since then, uh, the coaches said that he's kind of uh, tapered off four, seven, five, and five in the rebounding department. Missed the second one. Six point lead now for Penn State. Well, getting it done. The last seven possessions uh, for the Lions. They face the man to man the entire way. There's Earl popping off the screen again. Well, Buckeye fans want a little traveling music. There's the rejection. Stonewall, Mutes, and Williams. Good hustle. Got you all alone. Booth is there. He misses the shot, but he's fine. Looks like Gaudio could have taken that one to the hoop. Ohio State with a good rejection and then turned it over. Take a look at that sequence. Earl dumped it to the open teammate. Gaudio had it rejected. Williams picks it away from you. I going to say, Bill, the Lions show a lot of poise every time the Buckeyes come up with a play on the defensive end. Uh, the Lions get the basketball back with a steal. Big lefty. That's his seventh point. Secunda coming back in, and Donovan Williams now goes to the bench to sit next to uh, Jerry Dunn for a while. And the 6'11 freshman, no, one for two on that trip. Seven point lead for the Nittany Lions. We're down to 325. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a chance to talk with E. Gordon Gee, the president of the Ohio State University. Ohio State facing the zone. Stringer's the offensive threat out on the perimeter. <laughs> Damon Stringer tried the little alley oop down low. Four, three, shot clock down to one. Now the Buckeyes will inbound, and the shot clock is at one. Should be interesting. Has to be a quick catch and get it airborne. Stone rooks out high. We've seen sequences this year where he'll try to take it to the basket, and they'll try to lob inside. Made the cut, but faked it. D'Antonio gets it off. Well, and a pushing foul. He drew the foul. Pete Lasicki gets the foul. Lasicki frustrated at the offense end for a good portion of this first half by Bosley. Jerry Dunn looked a lot like Steve Spurrier on the sidelines there. Last night's game with Florida and Nebraska. Signs of frustration. But he has the lead, 31-24. Don Jantonio goes to the line. His first league game, Coach Dunn looking at his ball club. Got the opposing team with one second left on the clock. He commit a personal foul. <laughs> Jantonio is shooting 50% from the floor, 50% from three-point range. 
He was 0 for 2 until that one. And now he's 1 for 4 from the line. Earls in a groove, goes behind the back. And it keeps on going. Booth can't find the control. And the Buckeyes trailing by six with a chance to cut into the lead. Not a real good angle on that pass as he tried to dump it down in the post. Good fake by Tate. Good second effort. Can't get either one. Ball goes on the floor and Tate's down there after him. Good hustle by Jantonio. And Tate finally jams it down. Great effort by Ohio State. They got four cracks at it. <laughs> and with two minutes and ten seconds left in the first half, the crowd definitely into it. Penn State's kept the Ohio State crowd pretty quiet here for the first 18 minutes. And they lost the basketball. Here come the Buckeyes. Stringer. Coast to coast. Missed the shot. Control. And Tate's there for the tip. Oh, oh, Stringer went down hard. Said he's okay. Could read his lips. He says, I'm all right. But boy, he went down hard. He was bent backwards. Lost it at the very end. Tate kept it alive. It doesn't roll. And Ohio State stays after it. And down goes Damon Stringer as he grabs his back. Foul charged on Earl. That's number two on the Penn State point guard. And now Damon Stringer goes to the line. Damon Stringer is 12 of 15 from the strike on that trip out to Wyoming. The last couple of possessions at both ends. Booth was involved, but he left the ball get down on the floor. When you're 6'11", you like to keep it up just a little bit higher. Anytime you bring it down on that deck. And Damon. Stringer will be there. Damon has his first point of the night. Jerry Dunn, one of three new coaches in the Big Ten this year. Randy Ayers in his seventh season. Of course, Tom Izzo, brand new over at Michigan State. Dick Bennett up in Wisconsin. There's Damon Stringer. I'll tell you, in these conferences, it doesn't take long to flop things around. Randy, one of the real veterans. did not seen that long yeah, ago. It was the young Randy Ayers. I remember his first game. <laughs> trademark of folding up that program and facing the sideline. Late is two, 31-29. Randy not so young anymore, but his basketball team is. McKnight out on top and a little bit of a 1-4. Good hustle by Singleton, knocks it out of bounds. Ohio State picking things up defensively. Penn State for about the first 15 minutes of the half, pretty much ran their offense the way they wanted to. Now Ohio State coming with more pressure. And things change quickly with Earl going out for a breather. Good point. Well, that's for sure. This, this is a totally different basketball team with Earl running the show. Sicky so Sicky didn't have good balance. Cantono chasing him around the pit. Not a good pass. So twice Ohio State's played good defense here in the last three minutes come out with a basketball only to turn it over before they get it to the offensive end. Lekunda. Lasicki. Penn State, the only Big Ten team going for the preseason unbeaten. Whistle down low goes against Ohio State. Antonio. Under a minute, 54 seconds to go. 31-29 Penn State. The Lions at 9-0. Now the Big Ten teams, Illinois and Iowa, both at 11-1. Buck Double screen for Lasicki. Missed again, Bill. Tate with a rebound for the Buckeyes. Lasicki's 0 for 4, Bill. 62% of threes coming in. Yet to drop one here in this one. And Ohio State back within two. And Randy Ayers. Calls that offense again, Stringer. Stringer. It's all with a left-hand hook rolling down the middle. Tie game. That's what you call the home box, right, Bill? <laughs> Three points now for Damon. 7-0 run for the Bucs. They've tied it at 31. 
I've said it before. I've questioned this young guy's judgment, but never his courage. <laughs> Wasicki misses again from the outside, but they get the tip. It looked like Secunda got him. They give it to Williams. It's been a good one. There's the horn ending the first half of play. They played 20 minutes. They head for the locker room, and Randy Ayers Buckeyes trailing in their Big Ten opener now, heading for the locker room by two. It's Penn State 33, Ohio State 31, back in St. John Arena with more after this. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same revolutionary new training techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. The Defensive Drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Braves superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-274-4199. That's 1-800-274-4199. It really worked for me. So you think you can hit a jumper in traffic? Bury a three. Or make a slam dunk with authority. Well, even if you can, watch the guys who can right here on Sports Channel. This season, Sports Channel's lineup includes the best regional action from the Atlantic 10, the Big East, and the Big 10. So don't worry about hitting the open, Jay. Hit your remote. Watch Sports Channel and let someone else hit the shot. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see. 24 hours a day. It's all the teams. All the time. Always on Sports Channel. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Golden State Warriors tonight at 10.30, exclusively on Sports Channel. Back in St. John Arena, Mike Gleason and Bill Hoskett, 33-31. That's your score as the Big Ten opener. The Nittany Lions leading uh, the Buckeyes by two. And Bill, so far it's been a Dan Earl show for uh, Penn State. Well, he's played very well here in this first half. Ohio State's done an excellent job on Lasicki, the great outside shooter. He's 0 for 2 on threes, 0 for 4 from the floor. But Dan Earl was 5 out of 5. He picked up the two personal fouls, and he had to go out toward the end of the half. Ohio State with a pretty good team effort defensively. And very active at the offensive end, especially on the offensive boards. They're leading, they have 20 rebounds in the first half, Ohio State does, but 12 of them are offensive rebounds. And of course, Randy Ayers, because of the shakeup now, they said the injuries, but the, uh, the word is, okay, word is that Randy Ayers <laughs> was not happy about the trip out to Wyoming. He thought the Buckeyes were beat up on the boards out there. Well, he wanted some more effort, and he's getting it tonight, and he's getting a team effort on the boards. The guards have come in and helped out quite a bit. Stringer picking up loose balls, and we saw a couple really nifty plays out of Jamie Bosley, who was one of those guys that did not start here tonight. All right, Bill, the Buckeyes in the locker room trailing by 2, 33-31. Now let's head down the scorer's table to the Penn State perspective with Bill Zimfer and Bruce Parkhill. All right, thank you very much there, Mike. And yes, uh, turnovers have has been something that's plagued uh, Penn State here in the first half. Ten total turnovers for Penn State, Bruce. Nine for Ohio State. Another surprising factor. They're getting beat, especially in the offensive board. That's a real surprising factor, Bill, because that's usually a... Uh, defensive rebounding is usually a forte of Penn State. I think they have to feel pretty good in the fact that they really weren't in sync, but they're in the ball game. I think they're probably upset with the fact that they turned it over too many times early and they gave up too many offensive rebounds. But the fact that they still have the lead, given those factors, I think bodes well for Penn State. All right, and Pete Lasicki yet to get into the game. Uh, he had a couple of shots right. late in the half, but has yet to get off. 
Right, and, and that also bodes well for Penn State because I think he'll get off in the second half. All right, Penn State will be trying to do that. Let's go back over to Mike Gleason. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Two-point lead for the Nittany Lions. There's your score, 33-31. More halftime coming up after this. Okay, new rules. Individuals are no longer more important than the team. You want a piece of that championship? Put it in here. Nobody can do it alone, but together we can do it. Sports magazines include more team photos. More game balls go to linemen. We all play more as a team. We pat someone on the butt when they fail. Great like madmen when they succeed. Starter, it's about team. It must be Sports Channel. Whether it be uh, the chimes on the oval, which you can hear through our window, uh, whether it be our great glee club, which has such a remarkable spirit about it, whether it be the, the friendliness and the atmosphere of the institution. A lot of people come to this campus, they say, boy, this is big. And you know something, it really is big. But there is also another truth about it, which is uh, that it is enormously friendly. One hundred years of athletic and academic excellence. Back in St. John Arena, the Nittany Lions of Penn State in the Big Ten opener, holding onto a two-point lead of the Buckeyes, 33 to 31. Mike Leeson and tonight we're joined by the president of the Ohio State University, Dr. E. Gordon Gee. And President Gee, it's good to see you. Thanks, Mike. It's great to see you. Um, and happy New Year to everyone out there in our listening audience. What about this basketball team here? You have a freshman-laden team, eight freshmen on the club, seven and two in the preseason. They've exceeded my expectations. Randy won't say whether or not they've exceeded his expectations, but what about your assessment? Well, I think it's absolutely wonderful. First of all, they're fun to watch. Secondly of all, they're enormously talented. Third, uh, think about this as their freshmen. Uh, I look forward to when their uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors is going to be a great, great uh, team for Ohio State. And obviously, they're building on... Uh, on their talent by some good recruiting over the next year or two, too. I mentioned the fact they've exceeded my expectations, but you look at Randy Ayers and what he was forced to endure. Not too many college football or basketball coaches in the country could endure what he did with losing an entire recruiting class. Well, you know, it wasn't a test of uh, Randy's character. He knew what he was doing. It was a test of uh, the character of the athletic director of the university president because, as uh, you well know, uh, there's always pressure to win. Uh, but in this, in this instance, I think we did exactly the right uh, thing. And to, today we're sitting here in this arena, and uh, we've got a very competitive team, and it's very young, and uh, I think anyone would have to concede that over the next two or three years uh, we're going to have a very fine team. 
Uh, something came to my mind when you said we're sitting here in this arena. Of course, you've got the brand new arena on the horizon. Must have some mixed emotions. There's a lot of tradition in this whole place. Well, this is a wonderful arena. We would not have uh, been in the business of building a new arena, but for the fact that uh, we have tremendous fan support, this is uh, 13,500. We really need to have a 20, uh, 21,000 person arena, and that's simply the reason we're doing it. And also, we've expanded. We have 34 intercollegiate sports. Uh, women and men's sports. We have outgrown all of our facilities. Uh, that's the reason we're doing it, not to get rid of St. John because it'll continue to be used full time. Can you feel the impact of that new arena already? I mean, you mentioned some of the good athletes we're getting. Well, I think that uh, it's a great selling point. It's going to be the finest collegiate arena in America. Let me just say that again. It's a collegiate arena built uh, for college uh, sports, and that's what we'll be using it for over the years. And Dr. Gee, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the uh, disappointing trip down to Orlando. The Buckeyes start out the season 11-0. I thought they'd beat Nebraska. I thought Ohio State had a run at the national championship. Disappointing trip down to Orlando for you. Well, uh, you know, I think the truth of the matter is is the fact that uh, we uh, we were a little flat at, uh, at uh, Ann Arbor, and I think that that um, was a very difficult trip for them to make, uh, not because of the fact that uh, they didn't want to compete, but simply that it's a very, very uh, tough to come back from a loss like that. But nonetheless, we are 11-2. and two. We are six in the country. Um, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, any of our academic programs that are ranked uh, in the top ten, we take a lot of pride in, so we take equal pride in our football program, what they've accomplished. We talk wins and losses and X's and O's, but what about your quarterback, Bobby Hoying? Bobby Hoying, $43,000 in postgraduate uh, scholarship money. The number one scholar athlete in America, Bobby Hoying, uh, I'm proud to say he's a graduate student at Ohio State University, uh, in school today as we speak and doing a wonderful job. Uh, you know, that's what uh, intercollegiate athle athletics is all about. Ultimately, someone get a degree, someone furthering their interests and, uh, and their academic careers, and ultimately he's going to be a great citizen in uh, some community somewhere. And, of course, your football team, 11-2, and two, they also have the Heisman winner, Blitnikoff, and the Lombardi. Dr. Yeah. Key, we've got to run. Good to see you. Thanks a lot. We'll be back with more after this. automatically deducted from your checking account. So there's no bill at the end of the month, ever. Is that easy or what? Sign up for your Core State's check card today. Oh, I forgot. The card that works like a check, only easier. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Vancouver Grizzlies Friday night at 10 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. Back in St. John Arena, Mike Gleason, uh, Bill Hoska, the Big Ten opener. The Buckeyes trail by 233 to 31. And Bill, uh, some of the numbers of the first half. I think we're going to try to take a look at a few highlights here in this first half, if we can. And the big guy really put a difference in a ball game at the defensive end. That was Booth on a block. He had a couple blocks in that first half. He changed some shots inside. He gives them a different look defensively. Dan Earl had the great first half, totally under control, pushed it up the floor, with good body balance, found himself wide open. And Ohio State, with a lot of enthusiasm and effort. They had 12 offensive rebounds. Look at this put back by Bosley, who did not start, comes off the bench. Ohio State has the advantage in quickness. Stringer over to Coleman. Nice assist. Good play by the Buckeyes. One of their few they got in transition. Well, the Buckeyes are hanging tough. Uh, let's go through the numbers now, Bill. Well, Penn State shooting it well, even though they didn't have a lot of offensive rhythm. 54% in the first half. Ohio State 36% from the field, but they got it done on the boards. 12 of those offensive rebounds, so a lot of effort out of Ohio State. 
and Ohio State with points in the paint, but some of those were coming from their guards. Okay, Bill, they're down by two. We'll be back to uh, ask you what's gonna, what it'll take to uh, win this basketball game for Ohio State. We'll be back with more after this. We need your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's life. It may save someone you love. To help keep Jimmy V's dream alive, please call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Vancouver Grizzlies Friday night at 10 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic Practice Organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend. And immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-282-5020. The Dynamic Practice Organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-282-5020. Back in St. John Arena, there's the score. We're just about ready to go. And, Bill, uh, something uh, very noticeable out on the floor right for Ohio State. Five freshmen starting the second half. First Big Ten game of the season. Bosley, who played just four minutes in that first half, has the basketball. Tate did not start tonight either. Played ten. And Singleton, starting in the place of Rick Ute, who played 15 minutes in the first half of play. Singleton. This is the shot Tate's there for the rebound. And it's knocked around, finally taken out. Knocked out of bounds. And the scoring leaders in the first half, Bill, for Penn State, Earl had a good half. Well, well Dan Earl, very solid. He's in double figures. And Gaudio, just working in close, had one three, everything else in around the hoop. Well, you mentioned the fact that five freshmen start the second half for Ohio State. At 20 minutes to go, they're down to the bottom line. What, what do these Buckeyes have to do to win this basketball game? Well, they're going to have to continue the effort. I think they've done a good job of disrupting the rhythm of Penn State in the first half at the defensive end of the floor. But the half-court offense has been very difficult for the Buckeyes. Stonebrook played 19 minutes in that first half and led Ohio State with seven points. He's averaging about 27 and a half uh, minutes a game, Sean Stonebrook is. And Gaudio with nine points on the line with a chance to hit double figures. He's averaging 13.7 rebounds. 6'8", 240-pound senior for Follinsby, West Virginia. And he joins Sir Earl in double figures. Sir Earl with 11, Gaudio with 10. You know, this club came in averaging 84 a game. Penn State, 9-0 undefeated. And Gaudio with 11 now. And he pushes that Penn State lead to four. Ohio State pleased with the defensive effort. Now has to be concerned about the offense. Stringer behind the line. Air ball, but the Buckeyes are there. Singleton, nice rebound. His first bucket. Everyone flat-footed is normally the case when the air ball comes off. Everyone anticipating the ball to hit some iron. Good quick hands, though, by Singleton as he got it straight back up in the hoop. Girl looking for a screen. Nice pass inside. A little shuffle of the feet, I thought. Beautiful feet, though. And a great look by Earl. And Secunda has six halfway to his average. Stone Rook. Stringer. Bosley. 
He's going to take it. He misses it, but a new shot clock. Long arms there. of Jermaine Tate. Kept that one alive, and Bosley very quick to the ball. There's a little high-low. Speaking of long arms. Boy, Booth right there again. 88-inch wingspan. What do they say? He has the, uh, the wingspan of uh, someone maybe 7'3". Unbelievable. And he's putting it to use here tonight. And there's some quick hands by Bosley. Goes off of Lasicki. And the Buckeyes have the basketball again. Let's, let's take a look at that wingspan. Stonebrook trying to go to the high-low, but the big left paw <laughs> of Booth knocks it away. And then Bosley taking care of business for Ohio State very aggressively. Hounding his man some 45 feet away from the hoop. Knocked it down off of his leg. And Ohio State back with possession. They trail up by four. Singleton left-handed off the glass. He has two quick buckets. Singleton now with four. And there's the whistle that the Buckeyes are keeping it interesting. Bosley all over the basketball floor. It's a two-point game. And Boz gets a standing ovation. He just plays hard. Feet on that last time down. Good quickness on the slashing move by Singleton. And then Bosley always around the basketball. Lasicki <laughs> still can't get away from this guy. Seems like the Boz didn't appreciate not starting the game, Bill. He's he got the message very quickly. Williams with a basketball. Earl's on the bench. No, Earl's still in there. Check that. Secunda, that's blocked by Singleton. So Singleton with a nice move at the offensive end. Now picks it up defensively. Little backdoor cut. Secunda thought he had the advantage inside. A quick leap of Singleton knocks it away. Penn State with a basketball. Booth putting it on the deck in nice. traffic. He nice. draws three Ohio State defenders very quickly. I was going to say, nice job of collapsing down on Booth by Stonebrook. Tate rebounds. Now Ohio State. Chance to tie. Stonebrook stuck in traffic down in the paint. Secunda comes over the basketball. A lot of blue jerseys around Stoney that time. Try five. <laughs> nice strong move by Gaudio. Push up by Ohio State. Well, Tate trying to take it in. And that's going to go against Booth. No, they give it on Matt Gaudio. Gaudio is the only one that really reacted and got back in time. Tate put it up. Gaudio came with both arms. A few words has changed inside. That's pretty much a typical Big Ten inside play. <laughs> so Tate goes to the line. He's six straight games of double figures. He has only three. Booth goes out. I think Phil Williams comes back in. Freshman goes to the bench, and they bring in a little bit more experience and a little bit more ball. Check that, a lot more ball. 265 pounds worth, and Tate misses the free throw. Three points, 16-42, 39-35, Buckeyes trail by four. Tate, though, with the three points, ten rebounds already. And he misses both ends. So Earl's going to slow it up for the Nittany Lions, leading by four. And there's a reach foul by number four, Damon Stringer. That's his first. And Deshaun Coleman quickly jumps off the bench uh, for the Buckeyes. And Stringer's going to take a walk over and have a chat with Randy Ayers. Good heady play like by Earl that time. Screen was being set to the other side. He elected not to use it. Stringer start hedging toward the screener. Earl took it down the middle. There's some battling going on with God. He'll Stonebrook down low and Tate comes up with a basketball. Boy, they were getting physical. Coleman kicks it out to Bosley. Coleman for three. Coleman's got his second triple. He's the outside shooter of this group that's on the floor. Randy Ayers alternating some people, but still playing with five freshmen. 
Gotti, a strong move to the hole. Oh, oh, it drops got that one to go. It looked like he just pitched it up in the air trying to draw some contact. Penn State doing a better job of getting back. Ohio State trying to push it up at every opportunity, especially when Jermaine Tate is on the floor because he runs so well. Picked up by Coleman. Slow, methodically checking things out. Secunda from 16. This is the shot. Coleman rebound. Good screening action inside. Secunda popped out for the open jumper, but it didn't go. Ohio State holding the Nittany Lions to just one shot. Quick pass inside. Singleton. Williams clears it for Penn State. They got it where they wanted it. They had the mismatch inside. Singleton with the great quickness. Good move. Could not finish. With all that traffic in the first half they were having. It seemed like he almost, uh, he was a quick move, almost forced the shot off the glass. So Earl feeds inside. Gaudio misses the shot, and Williams comes down with it. Williams simply out hustled everyone on Ohio State that time to come up with the basketball. Penn State by three. The Big Ten opener from St. John Arena. Earl waiting for the screen by Williams. Thunder outside, a little shy on the three, and the Coleman once again, his second straight rebound. Push to Singleton. Nice transition basket for the Buckeyes. Six now for Jason. Ohio State struggles in the half court, but they don't struggle when they come up with a loose ball or the quick rebound and get out in numbers, and they force the 22nd call by the Nittany Lions. It's interesting, Bill. I think the first time since I've been coming to these games, Randy Ayers jumped off the bench and faced the crowd, raised his arms as if to tell the crowd to get vocal, get vocal. Let's use this hometown. Well, he's excited about these young guys. He wants everybody, I guess, to be excited. His senior captain, Rick Uke, checks back in for the Buckeyes. And Randy Ayers' Buckeyes have cut it to one again. Other scores uh, in the Big Ten and opening How night. How about that one? Wow, Purdue. Over Iowa, Iowa with three of the top five returning scorers in the Big Ten. Minnesota by two at halftime over Illinois. The Illini is 11 and one. Kentucky by five at halftime over South Carolina. Nate Wilborn, of course, the former Buckeye, playing for the Gamecocks in that one. UConn all over West Virginia. Miami giving Syracuse all they can handle in the Big East. Georgia all over Mississippi in the SEC. Right, Duke by 11 and Georgetown by nine over DePaul. 41-40, that's our score here. Penn State by a point. They led by two at halftime. Coleman, Oliver Earl. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Earl, way outside. Earl's going to try to penetrate. Loses the basketball. There's the whistle and the foul. It goes against Nishan Coleman. That's his second in the game. And regardless of the shot clock situation, Dan Earl always seems to be under control. That time he just split the trap, tripped as he went down inside. 41-40, Penn State by one here at St. John. Revolution will be led by Jason Kidd, Jason Kidd, Jason Kidd, but he will not face the nation, meet the press, or host the Revolution online cyber chat because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised, and the revolution will not fail. But with every notebook pass, every three-point shot, every crossover, and every strong finish, Jason can speak for the revolution, for the revolution is about basketball, and basketball is the truth. You know us. We're Core State Bank. But you may not know about our new Core State's check card. See? Looks like a credit card. But it's not, because it works like a check. Only easier. The amount you spend wherever you see a visa sign is automatically deducted from your checking account. So there's no bill at the end of the month. Ever. Is that easy or what? Sign up for your Core State's check card today. Oh, I forgot. A card that works like a check. Only easier. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. 
the Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Vancouver Grizzlies Friday night at 10 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. Over the Bucks by one, and uh, the Buckeyes shooting 57% against Eastern Kentucky, 59 against Wyoming. That pushed them to 50% for the season, Bill. And here tonight, only shooting just under 36%, but only one down on the scoreboard, and they're giving a great effort, getting a lot of second shot opportunities with those offensive rebounds they had in the first half. The second half, they've been very effective against Penn State at the defensive end, and then trying to beat them down the floor offensively. And Pete Lasicki still 0 for 4 shooting tonight. Uh, he's averaging 17 points a game. Ohio State has shut him out for the ball game. Big House, Big House Williams. A little traveling music for him, and the Buckeyes with a chance to regain the lead. Buckeyes with Coleman. Single from Stonebrook. Rick Ute now in the lineup, which remain Tate. Rick Ute, averaging about 14 points a game. He had three in the first half. Stone Rook, nice speed. Nice speed back to Tate. Great ball movement. Maybe their best offensive sequence in the half court all night. Good movement, good interior passing. Well, that was like a clinic that time, Bill. And it gets in the lead. That's their first lead since they led 14 to 13. Lasicki has his first bucket. Stayed down inside, just popped off a little screen. Good push up again by Ohio State and good judgment. Didn't force it when it wasn't there. Now back to the half court situation again. Long arms of Calvin Booth knocking it out of bounds, but it stays with Ohio State. Randy Ayers up off the bench yelling instructions to Jermaine Tate. I think he liked the way he posted up that time. A little too casual. Didn't hold his position. Huge. A lot of traffic. A lot of wide bodies in the paint there. The blue jersey's on, but Tate takes it down. Nice quick move. There's the pushing call on Booth. Tate did a better job that time of establishing that position. Stayed down low in a basketball position when he caught it. Had good balance, pretty good strength. Booth more upright, just pushed off with the upper body, picks up the personal. Knocked out by Secunda. That's the uh, second personal only for Penn State here in the second half. Lions by one, 43-42 in the Big Ten opener. Buckeyes are heading for Bloomington, Indiana on Saturday. J.D. Collins and Eric Harmon now having a little quick conference. Ohio State with a full 35 on the shot clock. A little spin by Stoney. And Williams. Big House Williams picks up his second. Stone Rook took it in. A little indecisive. Really should have put that one up airborne. And that one a little bit of a touch me not as far as Big Ten conditions are concerned. Not a lot of contact. State loses it down on the baseline to Earl. So once again, Earl comes up with a big play for the Lions. Good double team. That time, Jermaine Tate did what Booth was doing earlier, put the ball on the floor. Nice move by Earl. He takes it all the way down the baseline. And Udo pick up the personal foul. Good example right there of not picking up your dribble. First bucket by Earl in the second half. Earl hesitation move, kept his dribble alive and took it inside. Very close to stepping out of bounds was Earl with the left foot as he made that move. Definitely showing a lot of poise. The Lions uh, had struggled in the last uh, minute or so and Earl with 13 now. 13 points, four assists. Missed both of his free throws in the first half. He hits that one. He has 14, 11.47 to go. The Buckeyes now trail the Lions of Penn State by four, 
from around the region or around the world, if it's sports, it must be Sports Channel. Back in St. John Arena, Mike Gleason, Bill Hoskett, Creative Sports, Lions by 4, 46-42. And uh, the Lions' next game, the Wisconsin Badgers coming up Sunday at 2 o'clock. And for the Buckeyes, they're heading for Bloomington, Indiana. That's Saturday at 4.30. And, Bill, you'll be there. I'll be back in Charlotte. Uh, I guess you and Jay Crawford will be calling that. You don't want to go to Bloomington with me? Is that the deal? What's... I'd love to go to Bloomington with you. But <laughs> Duty calls down in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Big Ten, uh, our first studio show. From Charlotte to on Saturday. Well, at Bloomington is always a very tough call. At anywhere in the Big Ten is a difficult assignment. Penn State 9 and 0, finding that out tonight against 7 and 2 Ohio State. Excellent basketball game here, and things change when this conference begins. Four on the clock, and Coleman puts it up, and Gaudio's there to rebound for Penn State. You really have to take advantage of the home court. Booth was right there. Yes, right. By Tate. Tried to scoop it back up, and he'll probably go to the line shooting two. It's almost a late whistle. I, I thought maybe they might sneak that one by. The guy doing a pretty good job of getting down the floor and getting into position. Seven points in the first half, uh, Bill. He's yet to score. This will be his first point if it drops. Jerry Dunn says he's getting a lot of comparisons around the Big Ten to A.C. Earl, former Iowa Hawkeye. Well, anytime you block a lot of shots, that's going to be the obvious comparison. Trying to establish some rhythm in those two free throws. Got the first one to go, second one doesn't. Lions have scored six straight since the Buckeyes uh, took that lead. Now, I stay looking at the 2-3 zone again. Good movement, Stringer. Buckeyes keep it alive, but Booth comes up with a basketball for the Lions. Ohio State rallied. Actually led here in the second half. Penn State settled back down. Good look inside, and they're starting to dump it down inside, and Ohio State picking up foul difficulties. Rick Udell controlling the basketball. Udell pick up the personal as Gaudio got the good position. That's got to be one of the biggest frustrations for a college basketball coach. Like you said, they're pushing it inside now. They're pounding the ball inside. When your team gets to the point where it looks like you can't even stop them inside anymore. As Gaudio hits the uh, toss from the stripe. And Gaudio now with 16 points. He leads all scores. Big guy's 5 for 5 from the line. Make that five for six now. Well, when Penn State has been tough is when they've been able to negate the Ohio State speed, when they don't let them push it up or come away with the loose ball. Ohio State wanting to score from that defense. Penn State making them work, earn every point in the half-court offense. Had a hard time matching up with Ohio State man for man. Now they've gone to the zone. And they're doing a better job of clearing the defensive glass. Buckeyes getting just one shot each time down. Secunda comes down and buries the triple. Very big possession that time. Takes it to a nine-point ball game. Secunda looked a little quick on the trigger, but nothing but the bottom. Well, 9:47, Penn State now opening up the lead at 51-42. Back in St. John Arena with more basketball in a minute. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Vancouver Grizzlies Friday night at 10 o'clock exclusively on Sports Channel. 
Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic Practice Organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend. And immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-282-5020. The Dynamic Practice Organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-282-5020. 51-42 Penn State and Bill, uh, over the last uh, couple of minutes, the more experienced ball club getting it done on the floor. Well, they've had that 10-point run by the Nittany Lions, and different people have been involved in the act each time down at the offensive end. We mentioned Ohio State, best possession of the evening, that interior passing there in their half-court well that was the Tate Jam that put Ohio State up by one. They have not scored since. Well, the Buckeyes uh, pushed their three-point shooting percentage out in Wyoming up to 38 after hitting 64% in the tournament at the three for 10 from downtown tonight. Damon Stringer inside. Held ball situation. Stringer penetrating against the zone and left his feet with nowhere to go. And the arrow favors Penn State. Well, the Lions finally with the pick. Springer wasn't quite sure where to go with that one. He was airborne, had to put it up. Now the Lions with a chance to open up their first double-digit lead. They're up by nine, 51-42. Well, you see the difference in experience level right there. Stringer, after this pick by Bosley, forced it inside. Earl brought it down, didn't have the advantage in numbers, and they set their half-court offense. Booth is there. It takes in his face and takes it away. Coleman. Give him three. That's his third trifecta. He has 11. Of course, he hit that huge shot to put the Buckeyes up against Wyoming with 12 seconds to go. He's a real solid outside shooter. He got a great look that time. Cuts it back to six. One four set now with Earl out on top. Ooh. Radio just rips it across and we'll see if he's going to call an offensive foul. <laughs> going to go against Gaudio. Belder came up to check him, and he just ripped him. They seldom call that. That one just too obvious. He tried to back him off of him, just swinging the basketball. Does he hit him with the ball or the elbow? Oh, it's the elbow makes the Ooh. contact, but or hand. But. Well, Randy wants a, a better explanation. That's usually a pretty effective move, but you're not supposed to do it at eye level, that's for sure. Swinging the basketball to get it down on your hip, but Gaudio just raked it across Belter. Randy wanting probably to ask if this is an intentional foul. Here's the play. Belter up tight on him. He just <laughs> cranks him with it right you there. Know. Backing him off. Who am I to say? But it looked like a little frustration. It looked like an intentional foul to me. It looked like he felt Steve Belter was getting a little bit too close. Yeah, it's hard to read <laughs> intent, but uh, how can that not be, right? <laughs> Belter had the open shot, took it a little bit closer to the bucket, missed it, but the whistle, and the foul goes against Scotty. And that's a big one, because that's now his fourth. So the frustration foul. He's the glue of this basketball team, especially down inside on that front line. And Gotti will have to leave. Belder gives him a little applause. There's the move by Belder. He didn't back off. He took it straight to the hoop. So Gotti takes a breather. 16 points. Seven rebounds. 
Ohio State making a little run after the three. Penn State turns it back over. Belder goes to the line, has a chance to cut into the lead with the clock yeah. stopped. <laughs> and that one almost yeah. bounced off. The shot think, clock. I think I'll make it interesting. Five points now. 59% shooter from the line. Not how, it's how many. Second one doesn't go. But since the 10-0 run, Ohio State with the last four. And now Gaudio out with four personals and Dan Earl taking a breather. And Ohio State has taken a pun. Played much better, obviously, with Earl over there. They haven't had much rhythm to their offense. Damon McKnight trying to get out to the point. Lasicki is the shooter. Right now he's handling the basketball. McKnight on the key, in and out, back in. And that's a two-pointer. That's his first bucket. 53-46, the Lions averaging 84 points. Buckeyes averaging 81. Coleman misses from outside. And once again, the Lions they control the boards on the defensive end. That time it's Secunda. Buckeyes winning the battle of the boards at halftime, 20 to 14. Bosley again. Bos takes it up. Secunda's all over him. Bos says, that's fine. I'll just go to the line and drop in two. Crowd doesn't like it. But Bosley is that type of player. He kind of waits on the contact when he takes it to the hoop. No call there on the pick. Bosley takes it inside, slows up, knows there's going to be some contact, and then gets hammered, but you're not going to hurt this guy. Almost pinned it up against the glass. Do they still call that as a T? Pinning up against the glass, or do they just well, let that go? you can't slap the board, and if you pin it on the way down, obviously it's goaltending, but it's no longer a technical unless you just slap the glass and... And even that, you're supposed to cause vibration. So a lot of times those plays take place when the building is going crazy, and I don't know whether you can hear it or sense it or even see it, but another tough call for the officials as Bosley gets the first of two. First point of the second half for Bos. He has five. That's the lead to six. Stays at six. Once again, <laughs> Bosley after the basketball again, and, of course, it had to be Lasicki. <laughs> Buckeyes man-to-man, -man. Stonerook Lasicki side on Booth, and Lasicki, you know he's got the shooting touch. Hits his first three. Five points, averaging 17. Lead back to nine. Ohio State, this time Damon Stringer. Belter with the board, and Secunda clears it for Penn State. Once again, the Lions with a chance to open up double digits as McKnight runs the show now with Earl on the bench. Good play by Stonerook as a 6'11 boot had it out away from the hoop. Look at the big guy taking it on the dribble. And he feeds Williams, and Williams is fouled by Stonebrook. It's going to be number three on Stoney, and Williams will get the trip to the line. Well, that's something you won't see too often. Six feet 11 going out to half court, handling it against pressure. Talk about improvement. <laughs> he handled himself very well and got it inside to Williams, who missed the dunk, but draws the personal foul. He'll probably ask for that one to be put on the season highlight reel. Dribbling down and feeding off. Big House Williams on the line now, 6'8", 265 pound junior. It's only his fifth year of organized basketball. He gets his third point. Doesn't score a lot, but as a freshman two years ago, he shot 60% from the floor. That set a Penn State record for freshmen. This is the second. And the Lions have a 10-point lead. That is the largest lead in the game. Coleman for three. That's been the offense primarily for Ohio State in the second half. Just push it up the floor and try to get the opportunity jumper before the defense is set. Coleman with a shot at a four-point play. Williams is the one that just kind of waves at him. Gets a piece of the arm. And Sean Coleman likes that spot, drills it again. Third personal foul now on Phil Williams. 
Second half, that's his third triple. Four three-point plays, three-point shots for Coleman. Shooting 69% from three-point line, or from the free-throw line, excuse me, 15 points now. Ten-point lead, quickly cut to six again. As you can see, now time being a factor, 5.43 to go. They invert the court again with the big people handling it against pressure. Now Earl, who's checked back in, comes out to get the basketball. He's against Antonio, an excellent defender. Lasicki goes out of bounds. And the Buckeyes have the basketball, trailing by six. Damon Stringer checking back in now for Randy Ayers Buckeyes. Don Jantonio will take a breather. And Lasicki is just two of seven, and he hasn't had very many good looks at the hoop here tonight. That one forced a little bit. Good defense by Jantonio, who goes out. Five oh nine to go. Stringer, nice ball movement. Stonebrook, second thoughts. Stringer, nine footer doesn't fall. Earl rebound. Under five minutes, an undefeated Penn State, a veteran team, with the six point lead. You can almost anticipate though another run out of this young Ohio State team. Earl, all the way. Williams swatted away by Tate, but the whistle blew before the shot. Williams Rick caught it down low. Made a good play just to get a hold of the basketball and then tried to force it up inside. And when you have that type of ball, unless it's absolutely clean, there has to be some contact somewhere. That ball was on you, Bill. He has three now as Williams goes back to the line. In and out. Very interesting free throw delivery. He just kind of places the ball in position about chest high and just flips it up there. Keeps the elbow under the ball and gets one out of two. Four points now for Big House, 58-51. Rick Ute with a couple of big halves, second halves in Wyoming. He has uh, three points, but that came in the first. He has yet to score in the second half. Tate. Tough shot. Shot that one about 15 feet up in the air over the big guy. Ohio State needing another stop. Secunda takes it in the paint. Pushes off a little but scores the bucket. Good possession that time for Penn State as they got an excellent look. Showed a little extra patience and dumped it down inside. Rick Ute nails that three. Boy, it looked like that one left his hand going straight up in the air. Comes down nothing but the bottom. Ohio State stays, hangs around, cuts it back to six again with the three-point field goal. Seventh straight game that Ute has buried the trifecta. He has two threes, but that's all he has. Whoa, Williams almost... Well, well, that one was lower. You have to give the <laughs> offensive man at least an opportunity to move the basketball. Secunda misses the shot. You rebound. And Buckeyes down by six. 3.05 to go. Nice speed. Good catch. Good play by Jermaine Tate. Didn't take something that wasn't there. And now Randy Ayers wants a 20-second timeout. Big possession right here in the eyes of Randy Ayers. And he wants to make sure they get the shot that he wants. Jamie Bosley checking in for Ohio State. Let's check some of the other scores out, Bill. Uh, Purdue, wow, 83-61 to 61 now. That is a final. Uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, they are battling. They're still deadlocked in the second half. Illinois, 11-1 on the year, trailing the Gophers by a point. And Kentucky all over the Gamecocks, 66-47. As we check out some of the other scores around the country, Bill, the Buckeyes really, they haven't shown lack of patience. It's just that uh, I think some of the shots, uh, Penn State's defense, for the most part, is, I don't want to say intimidating, but it's uh, definitely altering some of the Buckeye shots down low. 
Well, they found out they had a difficulty checking Ohio State in a man-to-man -man situation. As you see, Gaudio is now checked back in playing with the four personals. So they went to the zone, and they've been effective with that, forcing Ohio State to take time off the clock and pretty much coming from the perimeter with it. Let's see what the defense is coming out of this timeout. This appears to be man-to-man. -man. Got down the stretch here with a six-point lead. They'll go back to the man. Gaudio left. Uh, they were up by five. Uh, right now they're up by six. So Penn State holding their own. Five seconds left of the clock. Stringer dishes. It's knocked out of bounds. It stays with the Buckeyes with only three on the shot clock. And that time as the shot clock was running down, it looked like Stringer might have had the offensive opportunity. Six-point gap. St. John Arena, 60-54 Penn State. We need your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. To help keep Jimmy V's dream alive, please call 1-800-JIMMY-V. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same revolutionary new training techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. The Defensive Drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Braves superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-274-4199. That's 1-800-274-4199. It really worked for me. 60-54, to 54, the Buckeyes trail by six. Uh, you know, Bill, I think you pointed out earlier in the broadcast that both teams are shooting 50% uh, from the field. Of course, Penn State, 49% from three. But look at the numbers here. Penn and State on the road. Still within six. Penn State taking care of the basketball and getting better looks. Ohio State with just three seconds on the shot clock. Stonebrook, good nice. move, and Tate with a second chance. Oh, with three seconds, that really was a good move by Stonebrook. Dipped inside. 60-56 now. Back to four-point game. Boom. Just for a second. Good ball handling by the Penn State team. They handled the pressure well. Lasicki on the assist to Booth. Booth, Gaudio, and Earl all in double figures right now. So a minutes ago, we said Randy Ayers took the 20 to get the shot that he wanted. Coleman puts it up. And, of course, when Ohio State came back out on the floor, Penn State had left their zone and gone man-to-man. -man. So Ohio State forced it a little bit. This time they show zone again. Here was that last possession. Good spacing and a good job of taking care of the ball. Stonebrook taking it inside, and Eric Harmon with the traveling call. Under two minutes, and it'll go back to Penn State. Lions doing a nice job, though. When the Buckeyes get in the paint, they collapse. A lot of blue jerseys down in that uh, red-painted area. Minute 55 to go, 62-56. Both of those actually under their average. The Buckeyes uh, with 13. Been at 42 now. Turnovers have been a little lower, but the pace has been a little slower. Relatively low scoring game for these two clubs. But you see that a lot of times in conference play. Seven on the shot clock, Lysicki. Nice speed to Secunda, and it's stolen away. No, nope, there was a foul. Ed Hightower says you got him on the wrist, son. Don Jantonio. And, Mike, I think we're seeing the results of a veteran team in these last three or four possessions. They're spreading the ball around. They're giving it up. 
and they're reading one another very well. That time it looked like Lasicki had a shot. He passed it up, dumped it in even deeper to Secunda, who was fouled. But actually a pretty good catch because you would anticipate Lasicki being your leading scorer and coming down the lane, and he's probably going to put the shot up. He passed it, and Secunda was there to receive it. So two big free throws now with a minute 24 remaining. Secunda goes to the line. Big House Williams checks back in. Secunda with 11 points. He's their top returning scorer from last year. Rashawn Carlton banged up his knee. If Carlton had been playing, they felt that Carlton and Secunda made up probably the best small forward combination in the Big Ten. He misses from the line. Lead still six for Penn State. This would be the, big of the biggest one of the two because it could make it a three-possession situation, and he does. Seven-point lead now. Of course, that's not always the case. They fouled Coleman on the three, and he had a four-point play. Deshaun with the ball right now. Bosley doesn't get the roll. Good feed on the baseline. Whoa. Big House Williams throwing some elbows around. Certainly was that time, and Stone Rook in behind him. No call, and we go to the other end. Quick foul by Ohio State. Damon picks up the foul. He puts Earl on the line. Dan Earl, former player of the year in New Jersey. Tate coming back in. Dan Earl with 11 first half points of three here in the second half. He has 14. Dan Earl at the line. A little shy. Jerry Dunn has the Lions off to their best start in 71 years at 9-0. Looking for number 10. 66 seconds away. Earl now with 15. Ohio State needing to push it up. They're fighting the clock now as a minute two remains. Youth. Hits the there. runner. Foul's going to go, I believe, against Phil Williams. So back to a six-point game, and Rick Ute can cut it to five with a made free throw, and he leads the Big Ten in free throw shooting. There was the move by the senior, realizing they're up against the clock. Got it inside, drew some contact, good soft touch. It rolled in, and Rick Ute, a 92% free throw shooter. Those numbers, three of six, Bill. Should Rick Youth be shooting the basketball more in a game like this? Well, especially now, you don't want to hesitate as you get down the stretch. Don't have time to run your full offense, but now it's a five-point situation. So Ohio State coming with pressure, and they'll make Penn State beat them at the free throw line if that's going to be the way this one's going to turn out, and it'll be Lasicki going to the line. Lasicki shooting 71% from the line uh, on the year. Five points, averaging 17. He's the leading scorer. One for four on uh, three-point plays. And it's amazing. This guy is 36 of 58 from three-point range coming into tonight's game. And you can tell he doesn't take it to the basket very often because he's just five of seven from the free-throw line for the year. So he is definitely a perimeter player. Averages about four shots from three-point land a game. He's taken those four, but only made one here tonight. Hits it from the stripe, 65-59 now, Penn State. 53 seconds left on the clock. Oh, one out of two, and a foul over the back. Secunda reaches up, going for the offensive rebound. So Ohio State can cut back into this lead again, and that's something you wouldn't expect out of a veteran player late in the ball game. Because you're playing against that clock when you have the lead. So Ohio State with the inside position, and now Sean Stonerook will go to the line. This will be a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Ohio State can cut it to four. Like Lasicki, uh, Stonerook is 71% shooter. Seven points for Stoney, all coming in the first half. He's yet to score in the second 20 minutes. 
52 Randy. seconds to go. Randy Ayers getting a couple of defenders ready, coming in now at the scores table. Singleton and Jantonio. So from Ohio State's perspective, they want to make the two free throws, go for the steal. If it doesn't happen, you foul very quickly. So the freshman from Westerville North, there's his numbers, three for four from the line tonight. Trailing by six. Buckeyes had one lead here in the second half. Biggest lead for Penn State was 10. Moments ago, a lot of people on a snowy night in Columbus were headed to the exits. They've all regained their seats right now. A lot can happen in college basketball in the last minute of play, and you're seeing it again right here. Let's see if we're going to have an offensive call on Secunda, or excuse me, Gaudio. I think it's going to go against Jantonio. Gaudio pulled down the rebound in some traffic. Fans didn't like it, Bill, but it looked like it got him on the arm. Definitely looked like it got him on the arm. So Gaudio goes uh, back to the line. Good game for Matt Gaudio, the 6'8", 240-pounder. Averages about 25 minutes a game. He's played more than that tonight. 16 points. He's averaging 13. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. 50 seconds to go in the ball game. There's the story. Penn State by five. Back with more after these messages from our local station. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams, all the time, always on Sports Channel. Movies, sports, music, an entertainment combination you can only find on Prism. It's terrific movies like The Last Seduction, Murder in the First, Blown Away, and Interview with the Vampire. It's exclusive home team sports featuring the most Flyers and Sixers games on TV. It's four great music shows, a different show every week with the best sounds from around the region and the world. Movies, sports, music, every month, exclusively on Prism. 50 seconds left on that big scoreboard clock in St. John Arena, Penn State by five, or the Buckeyes 65 to 60. Don't forget the next game, the Buckeyes go on the road, the second game of the Big Ten campaign. Nittany Lions uh, have the Badgers. That's Sunday at 2 o'clock. And then the Buckeyes are on the road. And uh, Bill and Jay Crawford will be in Bloomington, Indiana, as the Buckeyes take on Bobby Knight and the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana 7-5 and five, uh, in the preseason. Matt Gaudio, 16 points at the line for Penn State. And ever since that exchange where he swung the basketball, the fans have been all over Gaudio. He's an 84% free throw shooter. Gets us the favorable bounce on the first of two. Doesn't get the second one. So Ohio State, two possession situation. A lot of time on that clock. Nishan Coleman hits the tray. Big shot under pressure by Coleman. Delivers again from outside the arc. Coleman at 14 the last game. He has 18 and there's the foul on Stringer. They're going to put Gaudio back on the line. He's an 83% shooter. Nice touch for a big guy, though. There you go again. <laughs> <laughs> nice touch for a big guy. Okay. All right. Now, you saw Booth put it on the floor earlier. There's a big guy that can dribble. I guess that's an overuse. An old saying in sports. Huh? You're okay. Big free throws right here. Three-point ball game. <laughs> 18 for Gaudio. Well, you said your answers. They've only made one out of two here, though. The last three times up. Well, you yes, said your Hall of Fame credentials came on the floor anyway, <laughs> didn't you, Bill? Not the line? Well, they certainly didn't come at the free throw line. I guarantee that. Stringer, left-handed, rolls it in. Quick is first by High State and back to a one-possession situation again. There's the whistle. Foul on 24, Rick Ute. Yeah, that's the first bucket by Damon. Four on Rick Ute now. You have Damon with five points, and they trail by three. And Ute not tremendously aggressively, but they got the whistle to blow. So 
that one actually helped because there was two nittany lines and a lot of space. So had that pass gone through, a lot of time would have gone off the clock. Randy Ayers, five and two against the Nittany Lions with both those losses coming last year. Lasicki averaging 17, six points tonight. Doesn't get it. Randy Ayers out of timeout. And he gets a break here. I believe Penn State took it. The ball had already been handed two games in a row where we've yeah. seen the ball being given to the trigger man. But the timeout was called at half court. And Randy can be concerned that the ball had already been handed off, but he ought to be a little bit pleased because he's out of timeouts. Now he gets a chance to talk to his ball club. And his ball club trails by four. And there's the story. 69-65, 24 ticks left on the clock. Jerry Dunn looking for his 10th win in his first year, taking over for Bruce Parkhill. And Mike, with this much time left, you don't, in the four-point situation, you just go down and try to take it inside and really try to get a quick two and then set your press again. You also hope by maybe taking the ball to the basket that you need to get fouled in the act of shooting. Possibly a three-point play the hard way or you can stop the clock and get to the free throw line. Penn State, on the other hand, will try to take some time off that clock, play good pressure defense on a high stage, and the one thing they do not want to do is commit the personal. They have nine team fouls right now, so the next foul by Penn State puts Ohio State in a two-shot situation. The Buckeyes trailed by two at halftime, 33-31. Going over those last seconds, strategic moves as they were in the Cowboy shootout. Cowboys and the Buckeyes went down to the wire in Casper, Wyoming. Now the Lions and Buckeyes here in Columbus, Ohio. 69-65. Rick Ute, the senior. Nine points in the game. Six of those coming in the second half. Buckeyes, Coleman will handle the basketball. Set the screen for Coleman. He takes it inside. Penetration off the window. Scores. Booth does not commit the personal. They quickly inbound it to Earl. And there's a personal foul on Stonerook. Four on Sean Stonerook now. 12.6 seconds on the clock. Two-point game. So good execution by Ohio State in that sequence. They set the high screen. Coleman didn't use it. Took it right to the hoop. There's Booth there, and you see him pulling off smartly with the left arm. You don't get the clean block. You certainly don't commit the personal foul. And now Earl at the line, just 2 of 5 at the free throw line tonight. That one appeared to be going a little bit short. and just creeps over the front of the rim. Lions with four and double figures. With a three-point lead. Earl with 16. Definitely short on that one. The highest they can tie it with a three. Ute downtown misses it. Goes out of bounds of the Lions. Half possession with 3.2 seconds on the clock. Antonio will check in again for Ohio State very quickly. Bosley also going to the table. So a little bit more desperate this time. Coleman did not get a look over to Ute. They had a shot at it. Short. The high State will try for the steal and then the quick foul again to try to get themselves in a position to get one last attempt at it to tie this basketball game. Secunda inbounding it. And Gaudio goes back to the line. Bosley with the foul. 1.2 seconds on the clock. The interesting here is Secunda, or Gaudio, the veteran, put it up airborne. They're not going to call an intentional foul even though Boz just grabbed him along the back. Ohio State already with over 10 fouls, so it's a two-shot variety regardless whether Gaudio is in the act of shooting or not. Of course, in that case, had it been called in the act of shooting, he would have had three because he shot it just inside a half court. Gaudio did a nice job of getting away from Boz that time because uh, they, they got two seconds off of the clock. 
Well, Penn State, 1.2 ticks away from going to 10 and 0. And tonight it was a veteran team that withstood the rallies here in the second half against primarily a freshman team of Ohio State. So Gaudio averaging 13. He has 20 for Jerry Dunn and Nashawn Coleman uh, getting his first start of the season has 20 for the Buckeyes. But the Lions have the lead. And as that one drops in at 72 67. Stonebrook goes the length of the court to Tate. Tate drops it in. 72 69. Well, Bill, Jerry Dunn goes to 10 0. Randy Ayers, Buckeyes now 7 3. For our producer, Greg Logan, our director, Roy Alfers, Bill Hoskett, this is Mike Leeson saying so long. The final score, Penn State 72, the Buckeyes 69. Unedited, commercial-free movies. If you believe in movies, call your cable company and order Prism because no one believes in movies like Prism. witnessing a breakthrough in sleep comfort, unmatched by any inner spring mattress or waterbed. In the next two minutes, you will discover a way to achieve the most sound and healthful sleep your body has ever known. If you suffer back pain, if you and your partner disagree on how firm your mattress should be, or if you simply want a better night's